to the great debate where today we are talking about the question of screwball comedies in anime, which may seem like a strange topic, but I've noticed there are a lot of these really oddball comedies in anime going back years and years and years. Not just comedies, not just funny shows, but this idea of really over-the-top comedy, of um, almost nonsensical comedy, has been a big thing for a long time. You look back to Nichi Joe, Lucky Star, Azamanga Dayo, um, uh, Penny Pony Dash, Excel Saga, all these really weird over the top comedies. And so I'm wondering why this is a reasonably popular genre in anime. Because not only do they exist, they seem to be among the most popular anime series the year they, co that they come out. They, they all seem to soar in popularity when they come out. And obviously there are other screwball companies that don't work so well. But, you know, given the fact that, you know, maybe a fantasy series, you know, explodes that year, or maybe a sci-fi series, why are screwball comedies so effective in anime? I think one of the reasons has to do with the fact that in animation you can do anything. So a character can explode, um, a character can, you know, have anvils fall on them, and that totally worked. You know, Looney Tunes were certainly screwball comedies back in the, the 30s and 40s. And indeed, early animation, well, you know, the animation of the early 20th century, shall we say, you know, the Looney Tunes and Disney stuff very early on were definitely screwball comedies. Uh, you know, the very early Disney stuff, the, the uh, uh, Silly Symphonies and such. So there's certainly a long tradition of that, and that certainly you know, might inform it. And I think that also just speaks to the strengths of the medium. But it seems like, uh, whereas Disney and like, DreamWorks and other things have kind of moved on from that, you don't really see a lot of screwball comedies coming out um, in that sense of really over-the-top, um, um, anything-can-happen kind of a comedies. Um, but you certainly see them in anime all the time. So I'm wondering kind of where that is, where that's coming from, why, why that would be in anime in particular. Um, it's also probably partly a little cultural, where, is that enough um, um, adjectives on top of that? Probably partly a little, who knows, where there is certainly a, um, a tendency in Japanese culture to occasionally produce just really oddball things, right? Um, and so you can, um, uh, you know, that kind of wacky Japan concept, which is, um, as we've said before, a, a little demeaning. But there is a long tradition of screwball comedy in Japan. Spin to Win in the chat room makes a great point that comedies are easier to write in the sense that while good comedies may be hard, they, uh, comedies can always fall back on gags. That's an excellent point, I think, where, you know, Comedy is hard, but you can have the, the, the average comedy can always just be weird, random stuff happening. Um, <clears throat> yeah, with animation, you can, as Harry Partridge said, exactly. Uh, Rick and Morty is a great example, where that is definitely a screwball comedy, although it's, a, I would say, slightly more grounded um, than the average, well, maybe, maybe not. I mean, I, I would say, yeah, Rick and Morty is definitely that kind of weird, bizarre screwball comedy. It's very much in that Nietzsche Joe, Azamanga Dayo um, tone where, um, you know, um, they're not going to suddenly change Rick's gender for the rest of the show at, you know, tomorrow. Um, but it's, 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 it's definitely a show where you feel like anything can happen at any moment. And that's one of the, the strengths of that. And that is a medium. It's actually an interesting point when you think about it, that certainly Disney and DreamWorks and other big budget things have moved away from screwball comedies, but certainly other American animation has not. Archer is basically a screwball comedy, right? Um, would Captain Tylor, Game Escape asks, count as a screwball comedy? Uh, not sure, but I found humorous at points. It's a good question. I would say not quite a screwball comedy, um, but definitely a a large comedy. You know, a a a big comedy where, where big stuff happens, where the comedy can be very broad comedy, I would say. 
you know, kind of like The Jerk or a lot of Steve Martin comedies where it's not that anything can happen, but it's definitely um, a little weirder than your, your standard anime series. Um, and yes, yeah, you're right, Spindu, and also with the comedy, you can just kind of go for it. You know, it, it requires a lot of care and attention to detail to make a very serious, grounded show like a Witch Hunter Robin or a Bebop. Well, Bebop can be comedic, obviously. Um, or, you know, Razaphon or an Evangelion, things like that. You know, you, you just have to be very consistent. Um, you know, those characters have to look the same and behave the same, whereas comedy can just kind of be wacky and, and bounce all around, and the character concepts don't have to be as strong. It's one of the reasons why I think you know, um, something like Azumanga Daio, for example, which actually, let me give you an example of that. Um, so for those who don't know, Azumanga Daio is, was uh, one of the big screwball comedies of the 2000s, focusing on a group of high school girls. And a uh, really fun thing, it's now available in uh, a single large volume set, originally released in uh, four volumes over here in America. And uh, it is a four coma manga, about girls in high school, basically, and characters kind of doing their thing in high school. Actually, those are most of the teachers. Um, let's do the, uh, the more of the, yeah, there we go. So you have just various girls just kind of doing their thing in, uh, in their excellent translation on this, by the way. If you're looking for, it's really hard to translate comedy, um, especially this kind of dry Japanese humor. Um, not necessarily Japanese humor, but the very dry humor of this. Uh, they did a really good job of making those jokes land. Um, and so this is a, a good example of something where it is, it's about high school girls, you know, aliens don't invade, um, although there's some weird, like, dream sequences and things like that. Um, but it's still very much this over-the-top weird comedy thing. Um, and so in, in this case, though, those characters do have to be pretty consistent over the course of the story, um, because it is, to a great extent, comedy based around their personalities. You compared to something like Nichijo, where the, the personalities are consistent, but you can have wackier things happen, and especially side characters don't have to be as well defined um, in terms of their their characters and their personality, right? Um, uh, that's an interesting point there, Spindlewind. Keep on talking; you don't have to shut up. Um, you're making great points. Um, he, he mentions um, uh, the creator of One Punch Man, one. Um, and the, the Goody Goody Fairies guy, where that definitely, um, you know, um, it's one of those things where you can just kind of make a thing. You can, you can do something and throw it out there, and it's, it's easier to be independent and control or something like that because of, like you say, it's, it's um, and I think it's a combination of what you were saying, where not only can you throw things out there because you don't have to spend six months building your world and establishing all your character relationships and so forth and making sure that your, you know, your story is well formed over the two years it's going to run. You can just kind of throw a thing out there and if it works great and if not, try something else and eventually, um, you know, find the thing that is really successful. Ah, so Liquidus brings up the fan service uh, comedic harem series, which uh, I would classify as again sort of a broad comedy where it's not so much screwball, although there's certainly a screwball aspect to it. It's an interesting point, actually, that the harem concept, I think, has um, uh, gotten less screwball as time goes on. You know, certainly Slayers and Tenchi Moyo and those things, those harem series from the 90s, Saber Marionette J, were more screwball, closer to screwball, than your modern harem anime series, right? Um, so I, I think that's kind of worked its way out of that genre in general. And I think part of that is because of the success of the moe and harem formulas, where because you, you're merchandising those characters so strongly and so heavily, you don't want to be constantly making fun of this, those characters. You, know, you want them to be consistent and to be some, somebody that the, the, um, uh, the audience can kind of latch on to uh, and can care about, whereas, and obviously you can care about a, a, a goofy character, I'm not saying that, um, but I'm saying that it's a different kind of caring. You know, you can really, um, I, I find Osaka from Azumanga Daio, let's see if we get a good, uh, Osaka's probably on there, uh, yep, yeah, there's, there's Osaka right there, 
um, who's kind of the, the airhead of the group. And um, you know, she's a great character, one of the most popular characters in the series. Very goofy and very, um, you know, one of the more screwball characters in that sense. Um, but if you've got, so that, that's a character you can, you can absolutely make fun of and laugh at. Um, but when you've got a series where you want the viewer to have that emotional connection to really feel bad about the character, want to protect them, and want to you know, be a girlfriend, or be a boyfriend to that character, want that character to, to be your girlfriend, you, know, you don't really want to be Osaka's boyfriend. <laughs> She's just a little, a little too much of an airhead for that. So that definitely, I think, has, has had an effect on harem as a, as a genre and made it less goofy, which personally, I mourn in the sense that I liked that goofy aspect, that over-the-top aspect of early anime series, not, not early, but 90s anime series, where you could have an alien crash land, you know, the Urusa Yatsuras, uh, the Ranma One Halves, which uh, I would I would call, I would call Ranma One Half a screwball comedy because all sorts of weird stuff happens there, right? Um, that's another interesting point. Good point, Van Riley or Van Riley, excuse me. Um, Japanese TV sh uh, in general loves wacky comedy. Van Riley points out like the crazy Japanese prank shows. It's a great example. Now I would argue we have a version of that in our late night television. Um, you know. Much of late night TV is about some form of, if not direct pranks, but definitely kind of doing weird stuff late at night. Um, but you're certainly right that Japanese TV has a lot of that. And um, there's also like the, the weird, um, I shouldn't say weird, but the wacky Japanese um, game shows, right? Is definitely trades on that idea. Uh, and even also the comedy. You know, a lot of the stand up comedy is kind of nonsensical gag comedy as opposed to there's not a lot of political comedy in japan there's not a lot of uh of serious if you will you know issues based comedy in japan and that's just a, because in comedians occasionally try but it just and they they exist out there but it's never been a huge you know a, a major force in the comedic world um and part of that is i think kind of political in the sense that um wacky comedy is safer you know, you're not going to, um, nobody's going to bristle at wacky comedy the way they'll bristle at a political joke or a religious joke. Uh, so that just has kind of become the default over there. So that's a really, really interesting point. Uh, and you contrast that with movies, you don't see a lot of screwball comedy anime movies, right? They tend to, you, know, you can have comedies, you can have mecha, all sorts of stuff, but they tend to be quite a bit more serious or certainly not as strong on that whole aspect of things compared to uh, TV, and TV has a lot of those wackier comedies. So that tells us that wacky comedies aren't quite as safe. That a wacky comedy, and we certainly know this kind of intuitively, if you make a big over the top wacky comedy, it might do well and it might crash. There's certainly been plenty of wacky comedies that people are just like, eh, not my thing, right? Um, and then you occasionally have a pop team epic. It just explodes. Everyone likes it. But then last season we had Urahara, which is this really weird concept blending a bunch of different, different things all together of fashion culture and sci-fi and uh, cute girls, moe, and all sorts of things, uh, which I thought was really interesting. And it, it, got a, it got some attention, but in general just kind of didn't go anywhere. And uh, I think that's a really interesting uh, problem is that wacky comedy has that kind of... Um, that that chance of failure that is somewhat different than other genres. Obviously, a drama can fail as well. But I think, I would argue that a drama might be easier, I don't know, is a comedy easier to merchandise than a drama? Is it easier to sell plushies of a comedic character? I would argue yes. I would argue a comedy actually is easier to sell because... Even if somebody doesn't like the comedy, they will recognize the character. Whereas if you don't care for a dramatic concept, you're not going to watch the show at all. So I think comedy is easier to, for people to at least try. People will catch an episode of a comedy and try a comedy more than they will try a drama, I think. Uh, and perhaps that's another reason why 
comedies are so successful in in anime, with the, especially screwball comedies, because it's easier to merchandise. You know, you can throw, and also to that point, you know, you can throw these characters on anything, and it doesn't matter, right? You can you can have elements of these characters being thrown around, and they could be a plushie, they could be a figurine, all these things, and very few things feel wrong for a comedy character. A dramatic character, um, you know, you think of a serious, serious anime series of a, of a Steins Gate, and you're not going to have a lot of um, fan service you know, uh, merchandise around those characters. You can have a little, but that's... It's, it's a little harder to do because it's not the tone of the show compared to, you know, a screwball comedy where you can do kind of fan service things and you can do uh, kind of weirdly dramatic things, um, ridiculous things, you know, throw weird outfits on the characters and that will work. So I think it's a really, those are really, some really good points there. Um, so what do you guys think about that? What are some screwball comedies chat that you guys have really enjoyed and had fun with um, and uh, maybe we can tease out what's remarkable about those shows. Again, I think of Asmonga Dayo, I think of Lucky Star, uh, both of which are a little more grounded. You know, they are set in high school with Japanese girls. Aliens don't invade from anywhere. Uh, Pony Pony Dash is kind of my go-to for screwball comedy where it's really ridiculous and really over the top and you can have kind of aliens invading. Mm. But, um, and for some reason that works for me because there's an attention to, because it's, a, it's also partly a parody, right? Um, and that's also an interesting um, element of all this, where Pony Pony Dash is having fun with anime stereotypes uh, it's having fun with its characters and how characters are interacting with each other and, sco and goofy stuff like that. Whereas, um, I think a lot of the really over-the-top comedies that I don't like are ones where literally anything can happen and so there's no, there's no grounding to it, right? Um, and, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right, Liquidus. Um, the, uh, the thing about comedies is you don't have to have canon. Character can die in one episode and show up in the next. Although, interestingly, that doesn't seem to be a thing as much in anime. You don't get that level of bizarreness except in, like, Excel Saga, for example, which is, again, one of the, the canonical screwball comedies of the 90s where the characters would die at the end of every episode or sometimes multiple times per episode and then they'd just be resurrected and come back. Uh, and it was parodying you know, lots of different uh, uh, genres of anime and, and all sorts of stuff. So that is one of the, um, uh, that, that's an interesting thing that you don't seem to get that, quite that level of weirdness with uh, screwball comedies in anime, it seems to me. Um, so yeah, that, that is kind of interesting, but I, I seem to like more grounded uh, uh, screwball comedies. Um, and I wonder if that's also an aspect of it. I wonder if people are generally kind of more um, excited to buy those kinds of things. I don't know. Um, Gin Tama, absolutely screwball comedy. You're, you're absolutely right, Dirk. Uh, Kramati High School, definitely screwball comedy. Um, both uh, cases of shows that are kind of rooted in a basic premise, but goes off in weird directions. Rama One Half. Level E, interesting. I, I, I have no exposure to Level E, so I, I can't, I can't uh, talk to that one, I'm afraid, wrongly. Um, yeah, so uh, Rama One Half is also interesting because... Um, that is a good example of a show where really weird stuff happens and is, is almost always resolved within one episode. Um, but it is a little more character focused. You know, Rama doesn't really change much as, in terms of his personality or her personality as the show progresses. Um, a little bit maybe where, you know, the relationship between Ranma and, um, let me say Kagame. Eh. Um, Ranma and the girl he's focused on um gosh it's annoying me uh you know they start very separate and then as that franchise progresses they get a little closer in a sense of protecting each other you know a little bit more than uh, in any earlier episodes but in general um 
uh, that is a series about very well-defined personalities, I would argue. Not having seen huge amounts, right? Um, ah, Ping Pong Club. I have not seen Ping Pong Club, but I've seen clips of Ping Pong Club. That's it's, it's a great example. There's a there's a really weird, over-the-top, screwball thing. Um, and yeah, and that's a good example of, of a show that was controversial when it came out. Some folks loved it, some folks hated it. Um, and it just kind of split the, the fandom right down the middle. And some people hailed it as genius on multiple levels. Um, and as a result, it just kind of got that, that weird problem that it did not, I, as far as I can tell, it did not get really huge sales, right? But it certainly kind of did its thing. Right? Oh, interesting. Is Space Dandy a screwball comedy? Hmm. I would say yes, definitely. It's, it's also experimental. It is a perfect example of an experimental animation series. It's as, as experimental as Lane is in its own way. But, um, yeah, I, I'd say it's, it's absolutely screwball, especially because, again, bizarre stuff happens to the main character and it gets shrugged off and there's weird things happening uh, episode to episode that aren't, aren't referenced and there, there's no real sense of continuity. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Space Dandy is a uh, uh, trippy screwball comedy. Definitely there. Um, and uh, and Space Dandy, good, a great example of a show that was really, that, that, that did quite well, at least in the West. I don't have a sense of how well it did in, in Japan. It may have done well. I just don't know. But it is, it, it was, a, it was, for many people, the second coming of Shinichiro Watanabe. Um, or it was, it was certainly sold that way. I don't think it was quite as popular as Bebop was, <laughs> by any stretch. But it certainly got that attention, right? So yeah, there's certainly a lot of them out there. That's, that's a really good point. Ping Pong Club, Space Dandy, Gintama, Cromarty, Rama One Half, right? Inuyasha definitely has its screwball elements to it. You know, it, it's I would say Inuyasha kind of hovers on the edge of screwball comedy at times, where it kind of, you know, occasionally um, leans over the edge into screwball comedy and then pulls back. Um, you're right, Bebop was not popular in Japan, uh, but Space Dandy, so Space Dandy was kind of, I, I should say, was marketed to the West as the, as though this was going to be another Bebop, as though Watanabe was bringing another, you know, huge, successful show over to America, and it didn't quite work that way. Um, it certainly got plenty of fans in America. It got a lot of attention, but it wasn't, you know, that, uh, that enduring classic that Bebop is. For understandable reasons. I mean, I'd, if I were in charge of that, I would not have pitched Space Dandy as, like, as though it was going to be a hugely successful show, because it is this over-the-top comedy, and those don't work for everyone. It's a, it's a very specific kind of, of tone, you're going for in a screwball comedy, and sometimes folks love it, sometimes folks hate it. But look at Airplane, um, the American film Airplane. It's, a, it's one of the canonical screwball comedies, and it is you know beloved, absolutely. But then the earlier film by the same people, Kentucky Fried Movie, uh, which has some hilarious moments, almost nobody has heard of. And you know why did one hit and the other not? For you know, a lot of different reasons, but one of those things where well. Some, you know, sometimes it really works, sometimes it really doesn't, right? So it's really a tough one. It, it's, it can, I think you have that problem of, right? All right, on that note, I think we will uh, finish up uh, that little discussion on screwball comedies, why they're popular in anime. I think we've hit some really good points about why screwball does or doesn't work and that stuff. Um, oh, you bring up a good point, Liquidus. Let's talk about that real quick. Ghost Stories. For those not familiar, Ghost Stories was a by-the-book anime series, a supernatural horror uh, series that aimed more at kids, you know, sort of kids in a haunted house kind of Scooby-Doo style show in Japan. And then it, um, when it came over to America, they made a joke dub. Even for the actual real dub of it was a joke dub. Uh, while the sub was um, uh, the, the original, you, you watch it subbed and it was the original show, the English language dub was just jokes all throughout. 
and that got a huge amount of attention that ghost stories would not have gotten otherwise. I, I can't Im imagine ghost stories ever being successful over in America just because of all the traditional Japanese folklore in it and a lot of the elements of it just, just weren't particularly remarkable. But that remarkability made it a, a big thing. And actually, that's another really good point. One of the advantages of screwball comedies is you can have that one crazy scene, the one wacky thing that everyone shares online and everyone talks about. And that can drive people's attention to it, which is a little harder in a, a serious, you know, rooted drama, right? Um, or a, you know, an idol series where if you don't like an idol series, if you don't like idol series in general, you're probably not going to like this idol series, right? So that is that. All right. So yeah, so thank you all very much for that. And uh, we'll be back next week with more to discuss. Hope to see you there.